Hello everyone, so in this video we're going to be talking about uh, another application of lookup tables and that is uh, uh, histogram equalization. So in the previous video we've talked about the auto levels where we were taking uh, just uh, um, two, um, two boundary values and stretching the histogram between uh, those values to use the dynamic range uh, of the of the uh, image as much as possible uh, with with histogram equalization we are kind of taking this id um, to the next uh, step which is we are trying to make the whole histogram as flat as possible so what does that mean um, if we uh, take a look at uh, at our image here and the, the, the histogram um, we want to uh, transform this histogram so that the uh, peak regions are uh, well, lower and that the um, low regions are higher so that altogether the, the, the histogram will be uh, flatter. And what does that, um, does that mean? It, it, it means that um, the, the, the contrast in general uh, will be uh, a lot stronger as uh, the, 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 the values which at the moment are seen uh, here as uh, almost um, also almost equal to, 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 to each other. So we have a large part of the pixels in the image which have very uh, similar values. And those values will be stretched over a larger uh, range, which make the difference between them uh, much more visible. And uh, the, 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 the areas of the histogram where we don't have uh, many um, many pixels. We consider that we don't care that much to see the contrast between those pixels since there are so few of them. So we compress them into uh, fewer, um, fewer values in the output. Um, so how can we achieve this kind of result? Well, um, the idea is that we want a, a lookup table which will have this effect of stretching the peaks and compressing the, uh, the lows. And what does stretching the peaks uh, mean? Well, it means that the, if we look at the, lo at the lookup table functions in these values, we want something that will have a very uh, high slope, meaning that it will map a small range of value, of input values, to a large range of uh, output values. Conversely, for the, uh, for the lows, we will want uh, our uh, lookup uh, function to map uh, a small range of, uh, sorry, a large range of input values into a uh, small range of output values. And we actually have one uh, function already that, that has these properties, and that is the uh, cumulative histogram that we've, uh, so we've computed it before. Um, we already uh, have this, uh, this code from a previous video. Um, and the cumulative histogram, if we look at the, at the, at the shape of this, uh, of this function, um, well, we can see that in, the, uh, in, the, in these regions here with, uh, with, the, with the peaks, um, we have a very uh, large slope, meaning that uh, this uh, small range of value here uh, will be mapped to a large output uh, range. And in the, the, the low re, uh, region, uh, we can have a large range of input values that will be mapped to a small range of output values because the slope is very uh, shallow. Um, so however, the cumulative histogram like that is not a, a, a really a, a lookup table because we are not uh, mapping input values to uh, valid, uh, a valid output value. So we want the, the output to also be uh, unsigned 8-bit integers from 0 to 255. So how do we do to, con uh, to convert this uh, cumulative histogram into a lookup table? Well, we have uh, simply to uh, multiply uh, the, the, the histogram by the cumulative histogram uh, by 255, so that instead of going from 0 to 1, it goes from 0 to 255. And then we can cast it to, um, to uh, unsigned 8-bit uh, integers. And we can plot this uh, new lookup table, and we'll have the exact same shape, except that this time we see that we, we are having a, a discrete uh, function. Um, so we, we, with the, the only allowed outputs are uh, discrete uh, value, uh, integers. Um, so uh, let's uh, apply this uh, to, our, uh, to our image. So as we've done before, we just uh, apply the lookup table to the image to get uh, the outputs. And we can uh, display these images side by side. The input image and the output image. Uh, 
And so what can we see with that? We can see that the effect is a lot uh, more apparent and a lot more visible than it was with the uh, auto levels. Uh, now we've really uh, increased the contrast a lot in the darker regions of the image. Um, and uh, we've made uh, so the, 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 the difference between the pixels in those regions of the image uh, a lot more uh, apparent. Um, and of course, the, uh, this comes at, uh, at a cost, which is that we compressed some other part of the histogram, meaning that we are losing contrast in for, 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 for uh, other pixels. But the idea is that, um, of course, we are losing contrast in uh, a much smaller part of the image than the part of the image where we are gaining uh, contrast. So altogether, the, ima the, the, the impression that we get from the image is a much higher contrast um, uh, result. Um, we can also take a look at the uh, histograms themselves. Uh, let me take back the code for the histogram here. And we can display it for the inputs and also do the same for the uh, results. So what can we see here? Well, we can see that um, the, the effect that I talked about is, is very apparent here. We have, we have something that is uh, a lot uh, flatter than what we had before. Of course, it's not perfectly flat, but it's uh, still uh, much, uh, much more flat than we, than we, than we had. Um, we can also see that we have a lot of, lots of, of gaps, and this is uh, part of the, of the cost that I was talking about. We are actually losing information here. We are no longer um, using all the, um, the uh, possible uh, available uh, values, and that's simply because we are doing a, um, a mapping function that only takes into account the value of a given pixel without uh, its, uh, its spatial uh, context, meaning that here we can only map for if a pixel has an input value of 27, for instance, all pixels that have an input value of 27 will have to be mapped to the same uh, output value. So we cannot uh, kind of interpolate between those, uh, those values here because we have no information that would allow us to, uh, to say which pixel uh, needs to be interpolated uh, and which pixels uh, can just take uh, that uh, value. So we, we are increasing the contrast, but we are actually reducing the, the amount of information that's, uh, that's present in the image. Um, so of course, that's, uh, that's a pre-processing step that, that, is, uh, that can be uh, useful, but that we always have to be uh, careful about because we, uh, this is uh, non-reversible and we are um, possibly losing some, some valuable information. Um, but again, also some algorithms will, um, will, will work a lot better if this uh, contrast is, is, uh, is, uh, is increased uh, beforehand. So this is uh, kind of a common pre-processing step in, in, in many different uh, image processing tasks when we need to first uh, increase the, the contrast. This will make uh, border detection a lot easier for those regions, um, for instance, and uh, other uh, o different other tasks may benefit from this kind of uh, equalization. Um, so that's it for this video and I will see you in the next one.